This is Rotorua in the heart of New Zealand's North Island and it's one of only three places in the world where you have geothermal activity that's accessible to visitors. Here you can stand on the edge of lakes that are quite literally boiling. And it's hard to imagine how life could exist in them. After all, we boil water in order to destroy bacteria and other germs. But actually there are some forms of life that do quite well here. Some of them do very well. The ground around here is very warm, so it heats the waters of nearby freshwater lakes. That promotes plant growth and the swans feed on the plants. And since the ground is warm, it pushes up a lot of grass and the rabbits do well here too. Even the seagulls profit when they're nesting. While they're warming the eggs from above by sitting on them, the ground is warming them from below. But up here, where the water's hot, life's a bit tougher. Some ducks have adapted. They not only swim in these hot waters, they rear their ducklings here and the ducklings cope with it too. But they do pay a pretty terrific price. The waters are not only very hot, they're very acid, and they chew the webbing away from between the duck's toes. That means that they don't have webbed feet, they've just got claws. So they rely on tourists to throw them food, because they can no longer dive for the weed that grows in these waters. But what sort of weed could grow in these waters? Oddly enough, some of them do pretty well. Hanging in the steamy vapours above the waters of Romoco's Throat Lake are lichens, all clustered on the rock there. And in a nearby steam vent, you can see moss is doing pretty well in the steam itself. And these trees? Well, their roots actually go down into the boiling waters of the lake. But some plants are even more impressive. They live under the boiling water. This is freshwater alga. It's a simple plant, rather like the seaweed that it resembles. But here, it's adapted to life in water so hot, you can hardly bear to touch it. And this is even tougher. As you can see, spouting from the earth here is literally boiling water. And yet, living quite happily on the rim of this little crater, is weed, more alga. Now scientists think that some of the first living things on this earth were blue and green algae, rather like these blue green algae that you see in the water today. And they would have had to live under conditions rather like this, with hot rock and volcanic gases and steam everywhere. The difference is they wouldn't have had oxygen. They are the organisms that made the world's oxygen. For millions of years they were producing it. You can see there's a silvery layer on top of them here, they were producing it as a waste product or a byproduct. If I nudge those bubbles, you can see them flying off into the air. And that's what they did for millions of years, creating the air that you and I now breathe. So once, a long time ago, simple organisms like this came to our aid. They gave us our oxygen. They may in the future come to our aid again. When you get washing up powders to clean your clothes, sometimes they say cold water wash enzyme activated. Now enzymes are biological chemicals. I've got them, you've got them, bacteria have them. And they actually do work, they uh, make things happen. In the case of the enzymes you can get out of cold water bacteria, they chew up the stains in your clothes. The trouble is they are cold water bacteria. They're the sort killed by boiling. But these aren't, these live in close to boiling temperatures. So people are now looking at the prospect of getting enzymes out of these, putting them into washing up powders, and they will be able to work at very high temperatures. And that, of course, would be tremendous for cleaning agents everywhere. So perhaps in the future, you'll get to know these little creatures a bit better.